Good morning. Hello, recording is in progress. How's everybody doing this morning? If you could let me know that you can hear me good, give me a one or a two, obviously a one. If you can hear me fine, get that camera going real quick. Make sure I'm uh, there as well. Good morning, Kevin. Hello, hello, Helen. How's everybody doing? Everybody's doing good, I hope. Loud and clear. Thank you, sir. Good, good, good. See lots of familiar names and some new ones too. Welcome out to the Trading Coaches Playbook. My name is Tony Benson. I will be your guide this morning. Just getting some things shifted around here real quick. Good morning, Karen. Let's get the disclaimer out of the way. You all know what this says, right? You've seen it a million times. We're not registered broker dealers and investment advisors. I will not give you any recommendations or advice. Everything that we do here is purely for educational purposes. If we do discuss trading, talk about trading, it is just assume that it is a paper trade or practice trade. For regulatory reasons, we do not discuss funded trading. So with that being said, let's get all the, uh, the stuff coming up this week. Make sure everything else is good. So uh, trading you is coming up. October 13th and 25th, I believe. I think I'm on next week, if I remember correctly, uh, for trading you. And then Inner Circle is October 14th. Uh, Patterns in a Flash, I think I am up for that one. <laughs> that is, uh, for those of you who don't know me, if you haven't seen, that's the tool that I created. And with that tool, with a subscription, uh, that comes with, uh, um, I do two live web shops a month, just like this. Like you're seeing it now, we're live and in person. Uh, twice a month we do that, basically every two weeks. So uh, that is exclusive for Patterns in a Flash subscribers. So thank you, Amy. Uh, if you haven't experienced Patterns in a Flash yet, there is, of course, a two-week free trial you can get. Um, go check that out. There is the link in the chat box if you are ready to jump on that. Uh, Monster Market Movers is the 28th. And then, uh, of course, Mastermind Group is the Tuesdays. The free online workshops, Power Hour. Uh, every Monday, right, with Rob. And then uh, Trading Coaches Playbook, obviously with uh, Brandon, Ryan, and me. Power Option Plays Tuesday and Saturday. And then Saturday, of course, is a cover call Explore and Brandon's E-Mini Think Tank Monday, Wednesday, Thursday uh, in the morning time. So uh, you all should be very familiar with all of that. You can also follow us on uh, all the social media outlets, basically. So, and yes, it is only... It's, I'm on the West Coast, so it's only 9 a.m., so I'm still drinking coffee, which actually doesn't matter. I drink coffee pretty much all day long. So, <laughs> If you happen to miss this, Rob is offering this as a, uh, and I believe it's an on-demand inside your My Accounts section, the full-day training and uh, the manual and the Fibonacci exercise. So if you didn't make it live and in person, then you can get a recording of it. And uh, you'll have that. And he's got the early bird price, uh, which, as you know, Rob, he always offers a great deal and a very a spectacular deal in the right beginning. That's less than half off, right? So uh, if you want to grab that, grab that. Uh, I'm certain that it is 100% spectacular. Uh, I was not able to make it myself, but uh, I wouldn't mind seeing it myself. So, so now let's get to the topic of the day. <clears throat> is anybody else doing this? Or are you all just like super bullish and think this market's going to keep going forever to the upside? Give me a one if you think that's the case. If you think that we're going to have a pullback here eventually, then uh, let me know that too. I'm just, just curious. Okay. <laughs> that's what I thought. A whole bunch of twos popping up. That's what I thought. I have uh, actually, I'm surprised, a little bit surprised it's taken as long as it has, but at the same time, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot of twos. Yeah, we've already had a, a pretty decent pullback, right? I mean, it's already moved down. Um, in fact, I'm watching it. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see this. So I've got my, to the right here is my, I've got a dedicated trading machine. All I do on this is, this is just for trading. Um, I do a little bit on the screen I'm on now, but mostly I use this machine for emails and coaching and all the other stuff. So um, if you see me looking to the right, I'm just checking to make sure that everything is still good. So, but I'm only in, I've only got one, I've only got one trade on right now. I was wanting to get back into to the cruise line, but 
So yes, Robert, I still believe we have more pullback too. There's a lot of people that, you know, the five, the 5% mark, and we'll get to that too, but there's always this, you know, 5% pullback. Uh, and then some people have 10, I think it was Goldman came out a week or two ago and said they're expecting a 20% pullback in the S and P. Uh, so who knows, right? We just don't know what's going to happen. So I think, uh, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to repeat that, Barry, but I have a feeling that's a little bit of sarcasm going on there, which I love, by the way. I'm, uh, I have to work hard sometimes to cut my sarcasm back. So <laughs> anyway, so the biggest thing, I mean, in my opinion, and one of the, the, the most important pieces to trading is our mindset, right? And that's the one thing we have to get right. I, I can teach you everything there is to know about charting. We can go for days. I mean, Inside Patterns of Flash is well over eight hours of video. And I could have put three times that amount in there. Um, but really, I mean, the ultimate goal of that tool is to get you from point A to point B as fast as possible. And I, I essentially looked at it when I was creating it as if I had to go back and do it again, because I started back in 2000, right, over 20 years ago. The internet and on-demand videos and all that stuff didn't exist. So what we have today... I mean, we're streaming. I mean, anybody in the world can watch what we're doing right now, right? For absolutely nothing on YouTube. And 20, 20 plus years ago, that wasn't there. So you had live workshops and you had books. That was it. Um, so when I created Patterns in a Flash, it was from the perspective of if I was starting again, how would I want, what are the most important things I'd want to learn to get me from point A to point B? The little tiny nuanced things, the little minute things that really aren't important, you know, they're nice to know and they're good to have. They're you know, little tiny tools that make minor differences. But for the most part, it's, it's the big things. I mean, it's, it's the main things that are important. And so that was really a focus. So there's about eight hours of video in there. Um, so if you haven't checked that out, go get it. But the big thing is mindset. Are you bullish? Are you bearish? Or are you neutral? I'm just curious if, because uh, uh, <laughs> again, I'm, I'm assuming you were being sarcastic, Barry, but I mean, some people are literally bullish and they think this market's going to keep going forever. They really do. And there's a lot of, um, one of the telltale signs that we are at the end of the bullish move and there's going to be a most likely a sizable pullback. Okay. <laughs> I was 99% sure, Barry. Uh, is when your average Joes, I don't mean that to sound demeaning or anything like that, but when the average Joe that doesn't know anything about the market or rookies start jumping in the market, the retailers, if you will, that's what we, that's the kind way to put it. When your retail trader gets involved in the market, the bullish trend is most likely over. And as we all have seen in the last year, year and a half, since this whole COVID thing, since the COVID crash hit, there has been a massive influx of retail traders. Huge amounts of them coming in. I mean, record numbers of people coming in because of the rise of the internet, free trading, right? You can, you can trade on your phone. And then people are home. They're not going to the office. They're not driving anywhere. So they have extra time on their hands. They get up in the morning, they go to their computer and they're working at the computer. Now they can check out the market and see what's going on. They don't have a boss over their back looking at them, watching them. So that whole phenomenon created this massive momentum to the upside right? Which we've seen over the last year plus. And the question becomes, at what point does it come to a head and when do, does it end? And I want to jump over to charts real quick. We'll kind of bounce back and forth. Uh, things over there, that's right. So here's a, a picture of the spiders, or not the spiders, but the SPX. Same difference, basically, right? Well, you can see, I mean, and just want to look at the kind of long-term picture is there's the COVID crash, right? January, February, March, boom, it, and it bottoms out in tanks. And here's where people start just jumping back in the market. And retailers see the bounce and they're like, oh, and they start getting in and it just pushes it higher and higher and higher. And when you look historically, you look at this and say, wow, that's a pretty crazy run, right? I mean, it's very steep. In fact, if we grab one of these, you can see, oh, that thing's adjusting. Is this on? 
Well, that's what I thought. I didn't think it was on logarithmic. That is interesting. I wonder why it's doing that. It's is that the same? I guess it is. It's adjusting somehow. But you can see, I mean, if we, I, I think that's keeping a relative. You can see as far as the ascent that we've had, how steep it is and how fast it's run. <laughs> the last run we had in 15 was nowhere near that, right? I mean, we've got, if we just put a line on there kind of like this, you can see how fast it's run. And that is just not normal right after usually after a big run like this for a, an extended period of time it's probably going to pull back and so that's where i mean getting ready for it and the question becomes how far will it pull back and will it be a super fast will it be a tank like this like we had in COVID? i mean we had this back in april too you can see i mean how far is that that's basically three thousand to 2400 that's six there's a 20 percent pullback actually is that right I'm curious now to see, this is one of the nice things about Omega charts, if you don't have this, is this little uh, drawing tool. So it's the dollar symbol drawing tool, right? Where you can draw a trend line with a dollar symbol, but if you single click on it, it'll bring up this little box. Um, and you got a whole bunch of text to display here. Trading and profit loss as a percent. I'm gonna take that off. Um, where's that? Show length of bars. Those are the two things I like to see. I'm just curious. So this is a weekly chart of the S&P. How funny is that, October? No. Funny enough, we'll get, <laughs> I didn't even notice that. So this thing, the S&P, obviously you can see it continue to run. I mean, from 2010 up to 2018, and from 2015 to 2018, it had a nice bullish run, a little pullback here. And then this is a, a basically an 18% pullback from basically 3,000 down to about 2,400. 600 points. And that day is 928 of 18. I'm sure you've all heard, somebody tell me if you haven't, but October is usually the month that markets crash, right? <laughs> so October 29, October, I think it was 87 was the, the other big crash. Let's see, this was October of that year was not, where's No, nope, we rallied in 20, or 2019. But this was October of 2018. We had an 18% correction. So October already has a lot of people fearful and a lot of people just stay on the sidelines in October. They don't buy, which kind of gives a natural drop to the market, right? What happens if buyers step away? It goes down, right? It's kind of like, I know it's kind of a cheesy analogy, but if you take a rock, a big boulder, and you push it up a hill, you have to use a lot of force, a lot of a lot of muscle, and it takes a lot of energy to push a boulder up the hill, right? But if you want that boulder to go downhill, what do you do? You just step out of the way. As soon as there's no upward pressure, all you, all that buyers have to do is move out of the way, and it will just naturally fall by its own weight, right? Gravity takes it down. Market's not much different. You got all these retailers that came in the market, and as soon as they step away and stop buying, because eventually they're going to run out of money, right? Eventually, the, 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 the people that came in, the newbies that came in and pumped all their money into it, they've made a bunch of money. They're, they're maybe cashing out, but if they don't pump their money back in or they're all out of funds to continue to pump into the market, it's just going to fall by its own weight, right? That's a good point, Robert. Uh, yeah. Um, neutral. I was going back to the getting back and thinking back to the PowerPoint at least. And I'm glad you said that because I meant to say that. Being bullish, being bearish is fine, but we should realistically as traders keep a neutral mindset. So no matter what the market's doing, we're ready for it to move either way. I mean, obviously we have to come up with an analysis and you look at this chart and you go, okay, things are bullish, but are they changing? And if we look a little more historical, you can see that looks like a pretty meteoric rise, right? Yeah, there's the 87 crash. Let's see if we can put, yeah, there's, well, it basically started, I don't know how many we can get there, but that is, yeah, 930, 87. That line is on 9, well, 1030, something like that. So yeah, the crash of 87 is right there on that vertical line. That was also in October. 
So, and I don't want to, I'm not going to spend the time pulling up the Dow, but it, uh, it certainly is the month that that happens, but watch this. This is interesting. I don't think we did this last month, but now see, there's a, there's a logarithmic scale, which changes, you can see on the right side, changes the scaling of the charts to a percentage basis. So it's not uh, on the, the other one, when you go back to non-semi-log, you can see it's 250 points per deal. So it shows this, this huge ascent, right? It doesn't show it on a percentage basis. It doesn't show it on a relative basis. Change it to semi-log, you get a relative picture. Now it doesn't look quite as crazy, does it? So if you look at the market from a percentage basis, it's not as crazy as it looked before. But out of curiosity, because I haven't, I haven't looked at this for quite a while. I'm just curious to know what these percentage pullbacks are. I don't look at this a whole lot, but sometimes I come back and just do a longer term analysis. There's down 46% in 25. And this is a, oh, this is a monthly chart. So this is over 25 months. That's these, okay, these are the, never mind. That's the, uh, okay, that's the 2000 crash and the 2008 crash. Here's the interesting part. There's a lot of people out there talking about a crash, right? Was it Kiyosaki came out and said October is going to be the biggest crash in history? I think he's just trying to sell books. I don't know. But it won't surprise me. Um, the 2000 crash, you can see, I mean, obviously, this is just kind of an estimate, but these are 25 bars. These are monthly bars. So it was 25 months, basically. It was two years. It dropped 46% about. In 2008, we had a 50 plus percent drop in 17 bars, so 17 months. So we had a bigger drop in a shorter time frame. It, the thing that I think of here is, okay, if we did that, the last two crashes have been bigger in a shorter time frame. If we have another crash, is that, it's not a trend yet, right? I mean, we've got 46% in 25 bars, 52% in 17 bars. So if we have another crash, is it going to be a bigger percentage drop in a shorter time frame? Because we've got two markers. And if you all know charts, right? And I'm hoping that you know technical analysis well enough. If not, then get patterns of flash for certain. Um, how many points does it take to draw a trend line? Two, right? How many does it take to confirm it? Three. Now, obviously, I mean, this is probably a little bit different, but at the same time, conceptually, if you take it, and go, okay, if we have another crash, especially if we have a big one, it could be bigger than this and it could be shorter than that if the trend continues. And honestly, just my perspective, I think that's a highly possible chance. Why? Because in 2000, you didn't have internet trading. I mean, it was barely coming online, right? So the crash, most of us were still trading, you know, calling your broker, yet very few people had online trading accounts. 2008 was a different story. We've got a lot more people, a lot bigger percentage of the people in the market trading were trading online. And now the amount of people trading online and the number of people trading has significantly increased. So I think when you step back and you look at the big picture and you go, okay, knowing that, knowing that looking at these two data points and say, okay, in 2000, the internet trading wasn't that big. It dropped 46% in two years. And then in 2008, we had more internet trading so it dropped a higher percentage more in a shorter period, period of time. And frankly, I think that's what we're headed for because of the internet trading and the ability for people to move money very quickly and easily with just a few clicks of a button. So the panic mode gets hit a lot quicker and a lot easier. Just my opinion. So we'll see how it plays out. I mean, we never know, but there is one thing that, let me get to, oop, I want weekly. Did I get weekly? Yeah. Oops. The one thing I'm watching for, though, is back in 2000, there wasn't a whole lot. You go back to the, the 2000 crash, there wasn't a whole lot. There wasn't a big, significant pattern. I mean, there's a little bit right here. Let me grab... One thing I've learned over 20 plus years is to be patient. Right here towards the peak, there wasn't much of a pattern there. I mean, there's a little miniature head and shoulders, right? There's a head here. There's a little bit of a shoulder here. 
And then, of course, you got the trend line. It broke the trend, and then it just dropped. It was a dot-com bubble. Here in 2008, different story, right? We came back. Of course, you can see here at the bottom, this is the beauty of patterns. This is why I love patterns. There's a kind of a sort of a head and shoulders here, but there's an inverted head and shoulders that formed the bottom and gave us that launch from 750 up to 1500. The market doubled over since 2001, 2002, up to 2005, 2006, 2007. But then right here in 2008, in fact, let me, yeah, a 10% drop doesn't necessarily, yeah, exactly, Robert, it's a good point. Uh, historically, with market crashes, it gets cut in about half, which is what it's done here, right? I mean, one was 46, one was 52, just call it 50% on average which you can see just by looking at the chart, right? Uh, let me get back into my mouse. There we go. I don't know if we can get, probably have to go back some. There it is, perfect. So now we're back in 2000. This is March of 2008 on the right side of the chart. You all see that pattern right there? Because this is just a beautiful, beautiful head and shoulders. All right, left shoulder, head, let me just draw the face up there. Oh my goodness, that was awful. <laughs> Let me start here. This is why I'm not an artist. My aunt's an awesome artist, but I am not. Right? So there's the shoulders. So that's 2008. So we had a nice, beautiful, pretty well textbook head and shoulders pattern show up that gave us a clue that the market was getting weak in 2008. Come on, there we go. It's a little slow. Now, we don't have anything like that yet, at least not anything that pronounced. On the S&P, there is a little miniature head and shoulders, right? And the neckline is trending down, which I don't like. I can't stand it when it trends down like this. But there's a little bit of a pattern there. It's not prominent enough for me to really trade off, not to look at it and say, okay, we have changed in bearish territory. On a longer term picture, we're still bullish, right? Unless we break, we've broken those two trends, trend lines there, until we break this trend line, which has basically been in place since the beginning of the, the, the move to the upside. Until we break that level, we're not in a bearish territory yet, technically, not on a long term basis. On an intermediate, or at least on a short term basis, I wouldn't call it intermediate yet, but on a short term basis, right? And you all know what a trend is, right? Somebody help me out. What's, a, what's the definition of a trend in four words? Y'all should have the answer to this. Higher highs, higher lows, right? That's right, exactly. And the opposite is true is too, is it not? Lower highs, lower lows. So one of the things, one of the most important things when it comes to technical analysis is being able to do that and identify it. So we've got a lower high, Here's a lower low or a higher low up here, right? See, we've got higher highs, higher highs, higher lows, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Higher. You see how it goes. Now we've got the opposite, right? We've broken this point. We made a new low here and a new uh, a, a lower high here and a lower low here. And again, another one here and another one here. We got a little bit. We did break a little bit above this point, but we've got lower here, lower lows here. And unless we break back above this point, which, yeah, we're not today. We're down right now, at least. And it looks like, ooh, the Russell's starting to trail off big time. It uh, looks like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, well. <laughs> Should we go look at them? It looks like we're going to drop off from here. So if we continue to trend down like this on the market, I would say this 4250 level, is where I think we're probably headed if it continues down, which it looks like it's going to. It has been, if you haven't paid attention to, especially the intraday moves, uh, the market for the most part has been trailing off at the end of every day, it sells off. So it seems to be that people are selling every little, every little move to the upside, right? Here's where the, the retailers come in, the rookies, if you will, come in and it's buy the dips. Anybody else in that mode still right now? Buy the dips, buy the dips, buy the dips. Give me a one if you are, two if you're not. <laughs> I'm assuming you're not. Most of you said two. You think the market's going to pull back. So all the rookies say buy the dips. 
Yeah. Those of you all putting twos in there are like, okay, we're going to sell the rallies. So a lot of professionals have switched to where it's sell the rallies now. So every rally we have, they're selling it. They're getting rid of stuff. And here's one yesterday. And you can see the trend line that's in place there. The longer term one, it popped up and hit that. Not only that longer term trend line did we hit a roll reversal on, but we've got the short term trend that is down. And those coincided yesterday. And you can see what happened. And the other thing, it's not real prominent on the SBX, but the volume, the volume on the rallies have been very, very light. So, and it's been selling off with more momentum and more volume. So that's, that's another reason that I think we are headed towards the downside, but uh, we shall see. We get back here now. So we've kind of done this, the charts. I think I got a little ahead of myself. Long-term, intermediate term, short-term. I think we just covered that. The other thing is volume. And y'all should know this, right? If you have increasing volume, it's bullish, right? Increasing volume and the stock's going up or the, the price is going higher, bullish, correct? And increasing volume on a bearish move is bad. But what happens if the stock's going higher and the volume is light? This is one that has been on the radar the last few days. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So yeah, exactly. Here on Disney, you'll see that we have a bullish engulfing pattern right there, right? The day before yesterday, this is updated as yesterday's chart. Day before yesterday, we had a bullish engulfing pattern, but the volume, as you can see down here, was very light. The day before was positive or, or bullish, I should say. It was up on the day, but the volume was very light. And the volume was light yesterday or the day before yesterday on that bullish engulfing. So that's suspect. And then yesterday we gapped up, but look how light the volume was only not even 4 million. It does over eight on average. So yeah, it was up two bucks, $2.22 for the day. But Super low volume means that there's not a whole lot of bullishness to it. Russell's breaking the Globex low right now. A trap on the five minute demand zone. Are you trading the Russell, I'm assuming? Oh, oh, okay, I got it. That's for Patrick. You're going to buy the dip? Is that, I'm wondering if that's what Patrick's saying. Is, that, um, is he in the... Oh, he must be chatting there. Uh, That's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm not saying to do it or not do it, but if you're uh, buying the dip right now, at least in my opinion, is pretty dangerous because it dips and then it retraces a little bit and then it starts to dip some more, which now I'm cranky because Norwegian Cruise Lines is dipping. Um, here, let's go look at it. I mean, this is just kind of an open forum. We're not anything. Uh... Oh, I didn't get into this. Okay, well, on the play account, I did. <laughs> This is all I can show you. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have it on my other machine, so which is a little frustrating, but it is what it is. So there's, uh, and I know there's a trend line on here too that should be here somewhere. So here's what I mean, since we're talking about volume, and that's why I brought this up. I wanted to look at volume analysis here, because this is another one yesterday um, this one's killing me because I'm a little cranky because I missed it yesterday too. I literally put the order in and, and by about a minute or two, I missed it. So, uh, which happens all the time, right? Some of you are like, well, you miss all these trades. Well, you miss trades all the time. You got to get used to it. It's hard, especially when you look at this and say, you know, I'd be up 200 bucks of real money if it was on that machine, but I'm not. So that's okay. It's no big deal. Um, the volume on this, and this is what I saw yesterday, and you can see the longer term trend is to the downside, right? Or at least, again, this is a five minute chart. Oh, okay, Patrick, I got you. Thank you for clarifying that. I was wondering, okay, you're on YouTube. Okay, good. No, that's good. I'm glad you're tuning in. So, uh, but look at this Norwegian, and, and this is a, the top chart there on the top is a five minute chart. And then we've got the daily chart down below. In fact, I'm gonna blow up the five minute chart so you can all see it better because we don't necessarily need the daily. You can see the intraday trend is lower. In fact, I think, I don't know, there's a little spot right there. 
pretty sure I had this. It doesn't really matter that much. But there's a trend. I mean, the long term, if you will, on a five minute chart, this is five days worth of data, right? The long term on the intraday chart is down. The trend is down, right? And yesterday, these lows were getting tested. And I looked at it and said, okay, if it breaks those lows, it's probably going to head lower. And I literally had just seen it. But one of the things I was basing it off is, is we gapped in the morning, right? Hey, Brenda, you just joining us? <laughs> That's okay. Nah, I know. It's no big deal. I, 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 it's okay. It's not a big deal. You're getting here for good stuff. It's always good, right? Um, so it gapped up in the morning, right? And I'm just looking at yesterday. In fact, I'm going to zoom in on this as much as I can. So we're talking about, where did that go? Come on, trying to get the drawing stuff here. So, right, so this line right here is the cutoff yesterday, right? So this is, or day before yesterday. So here's the close. It opens way up here. So we get a big bullish gap to the upside. And what does it do? It comes up and tags that trend line. So it finds the same line that it's already found three times. And then it just tanks from there. And look at the volume spike right here. Now, granted, the first few minutes of the market, that's pretty normal, right? Same thing the day before that, right? Except that here, we closed here and opened way down here, a big volume spike and tried to rally back up, but then it fell off. And you can see the amount of volume we had on this drop. So it's never a bad idea to go back and look historically, what does this stock do? How is it, especially in the most recent action, what's it been doing? And look at this from there. And then yesterday, right? Let me clear that off. The market, right? The futures were up a bunch, but we've been selling off a lot lately, right? And towards the end of the day. So we had a big sell off yesterday morning. We get a huge gap to the upside here. And then it completely sells off and we have very solid volume. So again, going back to what we were looking at on the PowerPoint, increasing volume on whichever move, whether up or down, is an indication of strength or momentum, if you will. So we've got bearish momentum this day, and the next day we have also bearish momentum, even after a gap to the upside. So this retracement was to be expected, and the volume was actually fairly solid on it. That's why I waited. I wanted to, I kind of wanted to get in right about here, because I saw I had these points drawn. And well, you know what, if it drops below there, it's probably going to continue. But one thing I've learned is to be patient and sometimes wait for things. And this is one of those where I was very happy. I didn't put, because I would have gotten tr triggered right here and then stopped out somewhere in here. But I decided to wait. I thought, I want a better setup. I want a better pattern because it's already dropped so much from here to here in 20 or 30 minutes that it's likely to bounce. And sure enough, it bounced. And then it came and it danced around here, danced around here. And then what you can see is right here, we sold off for five, six bars in a row. Big volume spike there on the sell-off, which is often a capitulation type of move, right? And the bounce was to be expected. And I ended up seeing it right about here. I started drawing lines on there and putting in a trading plan. And I've changed it now for today, but um, it was very similar. It was right about there. I had to stop somewhere around here. The entry point was somewhere in here. And then the target was down here at, I think, 27, if I remember right. And uh, by the time I got to it, this, this candle had cracked. And you can see the volume spike here. And you can also notice that the one right before that, the volume right here, I don't know, hopefully you can all see that. Tiny volume on an attempt to rally up. And I was watching that. I was going, okay, if this thing drops, and sure enough, by that time, it literally, that five-minute candle dropped so fast that by the time I got my order and I missed it. And again, it's frustrating, but it is what it is, especially when you watch it go like this and it tanks in 30 or 40 minutes. And it would have been a spectacular trade. Does anybody else here struggle with the woulda, coulda, shoulda syndrome? Or is that just me? <laughs> Thank you, Robert. <laughs> every day. Yeah, every, every day. And Kevin. Yeah. Okay, Brenda, that's good. If you said sometimes, that's progress. Well, I, you should. Well, yeah, every day. I do every day. 
because it's it's uh struggling with it is okay succumbing to it not necessarily i did a little bit yesterday i missed one which one was that i don't remember see i miss them so especially when you're day trading on the shorter time frame you trade and the more more frequently you trade the more you forget about them and the more you miss <laughs> it's funny when i bring up the water sugar could it's all of a sudden everybody's just like yeah that's me took a loss on baba that's all right losses are okay as long as they're small right and the big wins are big. Exactly, Brenda. There's always another trade coming. But that doesn't mean it's not hard because when you miss a 20 point move in a stock, it's a little flustering. Um, when you had all, the whole plan out and it was just like, eh, I'm going to hold off for a little bit. And then by the time you get there, it's like, ah, it's terrible. <laughs> and it literally moves 20 points. It was a firm, it was two days ago. But getting back to the volume before I get sidetracked too much. In fact, let's, I mean, this is moving in real time. Let's see what it's doing. And I mean, taking a look at the volume as what's happening right now, because I am, you can see, I mean, I've got a, a through a practice trade in here based on this plan, got triggered the entry at 2682. I did this just before, I can't remember when I put it in, but I put the order in just before we got started here and it was sitting there and it obviously just triggered about, well, right before we started, right at 855. It dropped off and hit the order entry. You can see, there's a thousand shares there. It's up 187. So the question is, what is the volume telling us now? Well, a little volume spike right there in the previous candle gives a little bit of nervous. I mean, it makes me a little nervous for a big pull, big, big uh, move back to the upside. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Revenge trade, fear of missing out. It's kind of the same thing, is it not? The old FOMO. Um, so yeah, the question becomes, and, and again, you know, stick into the, the volume. What do we do with this thing right here? And would it make sense? You know, I think it makes sense actually to pull half of this right here. Or actually, I'm just gonna put a I'm gonna put a stop for half of it right above that candle there, 68. By the close, 68. So if this volume spike that we've had, the, the little bullish volume spike we had on this last couple of bars. If it breaks to the upside from here, I'll take I'll take profit on half of it and then give it a little more time to see if it will drop down and hit the target. But there's a nice little nice little drop there. So we'll see what happens with that. Let me get back to that PowerPoint before I get too far off track. So everybody clear on volume? Is there any uh, any questions on volume? Actually, I'll go back and let's look at that just out of curiosity. I want to look at Roberts too. If you have any stocks you want to look at too, we've got. We've only got about 20 minutes left, but missed it this morning. I'm assuming you're talking about a bearish trade. Or did you miss the you missed the the that little pop to the upside? Bearish trade? Yeah. Well, let's see. Oh, there it just hit. NCL just hit. There NC. Well, there's the gap. I don't know that there's anything left on this, but. Just throwing some lines on here to see. Got a little support right there. So there's the three major support lines on Workday. Obviously, in the short term, you can see, I mean, lower highs, lower lows. We're in the short-term trend now. Volume is really light, too. That's in the middle. If it got back up to this 2256 area, then I'd look at it. Ten thirty was a good entry. You're talking 10.30 Eastern time, I'm assuming, right? I have to go. Okay, good. So I'm curious, Robert. I'm really curious. You're saying 10.30 is a good entry. I'm curious as to why 10.30 was a good entry. Where is... Um, Patrick, using a volume chart? Are you talking about a volume chart that that is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a combination of the price and the volume. I think there's there's several different ways that people have done it. Um, as far as a volume chart, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by volume chart. Um, I don't, I mean, as far as any of those like mixed up things where it's combining price and volume and all that stuff, I don't. I simply just look at the volume and see what the volume's doing. 
I don't know if that's old school or what, but I mean, it's how I learned and it works for me. And, and in reality, and this is one of the things as, um, Oh, toss doesn't do volume charting. Okay. That's why I don't know about it. Um, but as far as indicators go, I mean, for those of you that know me, I don't, I don't, I don't lean very heavily on indicators. 95% of my decision comes off the price chart and what the pattern is, what it looks like. And the other three or 4% comes from volume, what volume looks like. And as far as MACD Stokes, all that other stuff, I barely look at those. They're really only, they're either confirmers or deniers. That's all they are for me. And I, I don't even look at them that much because the vast majority of information, you got to remember that indicators are nothing more than derivatives of the price chart, right? So they're mathematical calculations that smooth out the price chart. So if you get really good at analyzing the price chart and understanding patterns and candlesticks and how they, and, and how the price movement, how the price action works, then the indicators, you become less reliant on the indicators. And it took me a long time to figure that out. Uh, it's one of the reasons I share it. It's one of the reasons that I, I make it clear that vast majority of my decision is right off the price chart. And when I say vast, I'm talking 90, 95%. And the other part is volume is, you know, how many people show up to the party? Okay, so volume chart is a tick chart based on the volume, not just the trade numbers. So yeah, it's, it's some kind of indicator combining volume and price and, and other stuff. So, and again, it's, I'm just, I'm kind of a purist. I drink my coffee black most of the time. I like my steak without sauces. Just get a good quality steak and salt it and prep it right. Golden, don't need anything else. <laughs> I'm a little purist like that. And when it comes to trading, I'm really no different. I mean, it's just, it's all price chart. What is the pattern? And that's why I was, I was curious and, um, Okay, so you you talk about fibs now. Okay, you use so Robert used the fibs to come up with that price point, the price point of two fifty nine, which actually now looking at it, I can see that there is, you know, when it dropped yesterday from this high point of two sixty two, it dug in right there at two fifty nine. So I'm not sure where you do your fibs. I don't use fibs. Um, I like them, but and I played with them years ago. But again, it didn't really do a lot for me. I know Rob loves them, and Rob teaches them, and they are a good tool. But as what's funny, and Will will vouch for me here, <laughs> is that because Will uses FIBS, and I'll do my analysis on a chart. We'll come up with a trading plan. We'll come up with support resistance like we are now. And then he'll say, well, the FIBS comes in right there at the same place. So it's funny how he's using FIBS. I'm not using FIBS, yet our analysis ends essentially in the same spot. We intersect at the same places. And that's one thing you'll never get from me as far as charting. I don't say do it this way, do it that way, do it. Do it whatever works for you. If you like FIBS and they work for you, use them. If you don't like FIBS, don't use them. If you like MACD, use MACD. I learned that lesson 20 some years ago. I had, there was two Richards that were two of the best traders I'd ever met at that point. And uh, one of them didn't use MACD. And at the time I was learning MACD is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I said, how come you don't use MACD? I was freaking out. I'm like, why don't you use MACD? And he looks at the other Richard and just laughs and he, <laughs> Is it we teach him the KISS principle? And of course, I was young and dumb. I was 24 at the time. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, keep it simple, stupid. Okay. He said, I don't use MACD. I don't need it. What I have works. Why am I going to clutter it up and make it work? I mean, I don't need it. It doesn't work for me. So I've got, he had RSI or he used some other indicator. So he didn't need MACD. And that's my attitude is if you use something that works for you, then use it. If Fibonacci's work for you, use them. I just don't, I, I, I just, what I have works for me. So why muddy the water? And it's, it's always funny. Every time Will comes up, he's like, oh, so Fib comes in. <laughs> I just laugh because it's, it's hilarious that you can use different analytical tools and still end up at the same place. So, yeah. And actually I can see that. I mean, I'm assuming you went from the high here of 260 to the, the low of the intraday about 255 because that looks like about a 50% move. So I'm guessing that's what it was. Okay, yeah. No, I'm glad you asked, Patrick. Fire away. I'm going to ask as many questions as you can. That's what you're here for, right? I'm looking to make sure it ended. 259.05 is the fib line. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, and you got a previous resistance there too. And that's what I would use. I would say, okay, the previous support level right here yesterday, even though it was small, but it was a little double bottom and it broke it. 
sold off a lot in the close. And then we had a drop this morning. We run back up to that level. We tag that level and then fall from there. So whether you use fibs or just say, okay, it's a role reversal, same end result, right? That's right. No nuts and ice cream. <laughs> One of the things I like about ice cream is the creaminess of it, right? If it's not a creamy ice cream, and when you put stuff in there chunky, you gotta it does it, it takes away from the creaminess, right? Yeah, exactly. Hello, nice and simple. I've learned to keep it simple. Okay, Robert, I'm not gonna repeat that. <laughs> I saw some meme about that. Talking about talking about skin and the cat. Some meme about skin and this and skin and that. And I can't remember all the different puns that have been used over the years. So. Ooh, Patrick, how long did it take before I came to the 95% where I realized that the vast majority of, of my decisions should come from the price chart? I'm a little slow. Probably, I'm, I mean, it's been a long time, probably five to eight years, I'm guessing. I, I mean, I don't know exactly when it kind of gelled for me, but because it's kind of funny how, I mean, the human mind, we learn something in here. And they say the longest journey is from here to here, right? From the head to the heart. And we know something intellectually, but actually fully accepting it and really truly grasping it sometimes takes a while. Just like risk reward. Right? I understood risk reward early on. At least the concept of you know three to one or four to one. But seeing it from the perspective that I teach it in now, I didn't see that. I don't know if somebody did, if I just never picked up on it. I don't know if it just didn't hit me or what the deal was, but that took a while to figure out too. Thank you, Brenda. Um, so yeah, it's it, a lot of times it's, it is literally just perspective. Yeah. Okay, hold on, Brenda. I gotta, I gotta go check these real quick. Corning, there's another one too, I'm watching this. Here's another one, I mean, since we were on volume real quick, but a gap up this morning, and this is another one that yesterday sold off a little bit. I took a little piece out right here yesterday on that drop towards the end of the day. And watching for that to see if it'll do it again. Um, flow, this is another one. I got a couple orders here. This actually, I should cancel those. That's too far away from them now. Cancel those. This is one that is killing me right now. This is beyond me. That trading plan right there, I actually had it in, in before. And this is where, it, this is what's hard about practice versus funded accounts, right? Because I didn't put a practice trade on this. And right here, when it started to dance around, I saw this sell-off yesterday, a little miniature kind of head and shoulders. I thought, you know what? This thing's probably going to drop. And looking at the old resistance there of, or this, this support level here of 102. So I had this whole trading plan in place. And right here, as it started to drop on that candle, I put an order in to short it at 103.78. Came back and said, it's not available to short. Practice account, it would have done it. That's why there's no position here. I, I mean, because I tried to do this in my funded account and it wouldn't short, it wasn't available. So I didn't do it here. Cause I don't wanna, I wanna, if I'm gonna do a practice account, I want to mimic my real account. I don't want it to be, so there's Norwegian cruise lines. That's uh, yeah, I had a little bounce back up. Here's another going back to that volume analysis. Look at what it's been doing the last few bars. Look at the volume getting lighter and lighter and lighter. Of course it sold off again here, but with still a really light volume. So. Unless this volume really pops. Yeah, I think that I'm gonna put 2675. Is that right? Yeah, so if it breaks back above this high, I'll get out of this. Is that right? 500, I'm still long 500. We'll stop out of it if it hits. If it breaks up to a new high, then I don't wanna be in it anymore. I'll just take the, take the profit run. It won't be a lot, but it'll still be, I don't know, hundred bucks or so. Okay, Brenda. Oh, ABBV. Don't let me forget Robert. I won't. How much time we got? I'm getting tight. Um, are we looking at intraday on this? Well, there's all just, since we're here, we'll look at it. All of the above. <laughs> Supposed to be decisive, Brenda. So intraday, I mean, obviously you can see, uh, well, yeah, eight, uh, oh, the cues. Yeah, this is, again, this is a five minute chart. So you got to remember the time frame you're on. So 
Uh, and we've broken the midpoint, right? If you're familiar with patterns, there's the double bottom. The midpoint is right there. We broke it above that. And actually we rallied above it. We pulled back to it right now. It's starting to move higher, but will it keep going? And the only way, the only time we're technically would become more bullish on the queues is would be to break that downtrend line. Cause that was confirmed this morning. We got a little bit of a hits on it. And this morning it gapped up to it, hit it and fell off from there. The challenged it a couple of times here and then it's fallen. So right now it's kind of an, I mean, I would even in a mixed phase right here. Big spike of volume right there on that bar. What about the gap to 359? This dropping back and filling that, I, that's what I would expect to see. But I'm also right now, I mean, looking at the overall market. Um, yeah, I mean, I think by the end of the day, it'll probably do this if it sells off. This is where, and this is exactly where I'd look at this. <clears throat> In fact, I like this. Thank you for bringing it up. <laughs> I don't look at the cues a whole lot, but uh, we'll just use that. We're going to throw a trading plan on here and utilize it. See if uh, to the left, 361. I won't forget about you, Robert. I saw ABB uh, on there. Um, I know my risk reward calculator is here somewhere. There it is over there. <laughs> I'm not going to thank you yet until I make a profit on it. <laughs> so stop, make the target 359, let's put 359.70 right there just below that. So, oh, exactly 361, interesting. So there is now. If you're not, if you're if you're new to me and you haven't seen me before, this is this is basically how I trade. Now you find a pattern, you analyze the chart, or you don't even have to find a pattern. I mean, this is not necessarily a pattern, except we had a double bottom there, which is giving a little bit of bullish signal right now. But until it breaks above that downtrend line, I wouldn't be bullish, and I would want to see it break this high before I got bullish on this thing. So we're looking at about three sixty two sixty five which means a break of the downtrend plus a break of that high. So we have a higher, higher high. Is that a higher high? Yeah, I guess we'd have a higher high then. So yeah, I don't know what that print is. I don't know if that actually just took place or not, or if it's just a, a blip, I don't know. But I'm looking at this and saying, okay, we do have the trend. And Brendan made a good point that we have the gap from yesterday that has yet to be filled, which again, they don't always fill. Oh, it's not on yours? Yeah, it's probably just a bad print. Usually when you see something like that, I usually just kind of ignore it. Because a lot of times it's just a bad print. So right now I'm looking at this. Okay, we've been bearish for the last several hours, right? And that gap is a decent likelihood to fill. So I'll watch this for the next hour or two and have a hook down here at 361. If it hits 361 and drops to 359.69, I mean, I don't know. I didn't even see what the numbers are, but... Okay, so you got a buck thirty, a buck thirty of potential profit with forty three cents of risk. So depending on you know how much you're working with and how much you want to risk, I mean, if you want to risk four hundred thirty bucks, then you short a thousand shares of the queues. If it runs and hits the target, you make thirteen hundred, right? If you only want to risk forty three dollars, short a hundred shares, and you make one hundred thirty if it hits the target, right? Ultimately, it comes down to here and maintaining that risk. You say, okay, you got 43 bucks per lot for, per 100 shares. You figure out how much you want to risk. Okay, I'm comfortable with $150 of risk on this one trade. Okay, I can do 300 shares. I'm comfortable with 430. I'm comfortable with 800, whatever the number is. Just take that number. Here's how much I'm willing to risk to see if I can make a profit on this. And then just let it do its thing. You've done your analysis. I mean, it's looking bearish especially if it breaks down, that's because that would be a new low for the day and actually there. And you got, as well know, I mean, gaps very often fill, not always, but they often do fill and that would be a fill of the gap. So we'll see how it plays out. And the last few days, the market has sold off at the close. At the end of the day, it sells off. That's what it's been doing. So if today's like the last several days, just like you could see yesterday, it sold off, right? All right, let me... Yeah, here, Robert, before I forget. I think that was Robert. That, whoops. 
Yeah. Sorry. Thanks for being patient. ABVV. Yeah, this is another one too. I, I This has been on my radar a couple of times the last few days. I can't remember when or where. Probably have it over there, but. Ooh, what is happening right now? Y'all see that pattern? I know you're talking about paper money, Robert. <laughs> right? We only talk about paper money here. Um, <laughs> just because of regulation. It's just, it's, it's frustrating, but it is what it is. So, <laughs> now, it, well, see, and here's the funny thing about patterns is that you can, you can see a lot of different things. Um, yeah, I'm just throwing some lines on here. And, and this is where charting is very, very subjective. Okay, and that trend's only hit twice. Not really that big of a fan of that. Inverted head and shoulders. I'm seeing a head and shoulders, head and shoulders. Uh, y'all see that? Let me grab the pen real quick. I got your question, Patrick. Hold on. Give me just a minute. I'm going to try to stay on one thing at a time because I get a little ADD sometimes. So left shoulder, head, right shoulder, right? Here's the smiley face. It looks like a frown from there, but not beautiful. It's not, I wouldn't call it textbook, but the pattern is there. Well, it's challenging that the, the right shoulder right now. So if it holds this level, let me zoom in on here. If it if it stays below this level, then we have a right, another right shoulder, and we'd have a double top that's formed, right? Which is what it's doing. You can see it ticking right now. This is one reason I love being able to do stuff intraday, right? When the market's open. I mean, even though we're just playing on a simulated account, but still, it's the question becomes: Is do you trade this right here? Do you get aggressive and get into it? Should we pull the trigger on it just for fun? <laughs> Excuse me. Because we're challenging that high right now. So if it can't break above this high, then it's highly likely to come back down to here at about 111.11. If it doesn't hold that level, it's probably come down to 110. If it breaks that 110 level, then the next level is, you know, there's a little bit right here. It's not huge. There's some right here too, actually. Actually, this is probably the next major level right about there. Whoops. I don't know why it click, doesn't click. 110.21. So. So as far as a pattern goes, we've got a head and shoulders that's formed. And now we are literally in the process as we speak of watching a double top form. And there's a little bit of, I mean, you could call that an evening star. And actually that's about as beautiful in the textbook as it gets. A rally, five bars, solid volume, big volume on the doji day, the spinning top. And now if the volume accelerates, how much time? We got 10 seconds left in this candle. So light volume on the downward move. So that light volume on this candle that's about to close out is definitely not very convincing. So I wouldn't be taking a trade on this right now. Or wait a minute. I can just not jump into the next one. I don't know. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Just a few seconds delayed. Yeah, the market itself is starting to look more bearish too. Um, holy cow, we're at 10 o'clock. I just noticed that. Um, yeah, the volume on this down bar here would give me a little hesitation. So I'd be watching for this. This is one that, again, we're forming a double top right here as we speak. We've got a head and shoulders that's played out over the last couple of days. So I wouldn't be super bullish on it unless it breaks higher from here. If it breaks higher, then yeah, I'd be still be bullish. But, and again, this is an intraday chart. So keep that in mind as far as time frame. We're looking at two or three days worth. So the Q's is falling. What's, uh, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Flow, I don't care about that. I'm trying to see what. There's Norwegian. Did that? Oh, that stopped out. Okay. Norwegian Cruise Line just stopped out. Anybody want to place? I'll bet that that profit 105 bucks. I'll bet somebody that this thing tanks from here. Watch. <laughs> That's okay. I don't really care because whatever happens from there, I, I banks a profit. I mean, it's only 105 dollars, but it's 105 bucks. Um, there's Gilead is finally breaking down. Oh, this is one that was frustrating. It stopped me out. And then drop back down and stop me out. I have another hook down here. There's one. You can see the nice little trend that's in play. So <laughs> I just saw your note, Will. Yeah, scale in now before you miss it. I've learned to be patient, though. Yeah, Robert. 
Um, <laughs> to answer your question, Patrick, no. <laughs> Beyond Meat's killing me though, because there's uh, 103. That's almost that's three bucks of profit right there that I didn't get. What was I missing? There was something else I was going to look at real quick, but um, I thought I thought I missed somebody's uh, stock to look at, but I was going to have to do it really quick. I don't think we did. So hopefully we caught you. If not, so it's still a shoulder. Which one was that? ABBV. Let me get back there real quick, and then I'm going to jump to the. Yeah, I was still considered a shoulder. I mean, the, the right shoulder is still forming. And even if, even if you take that and consider it not to be a right shoulder, then you still have the double top, right? So either way, I mean, the, the pattern is still good. But again, like that light volume on that down candle, it's super light relative to what it's been doing. So I'd be hesitant to do anything with it bearish yet until it gives me some other indication. So, and that right there, as you can see, is why. When would I call it not a shoulder? When it either breaks, if it breaks this high, like it's about to do, I mean, if it closes above that high and makes another high, then not only is the double top negated, well, I take that back. The, the shoulder would be gone if it breaks this high, if it breaks the high of the head. Here we break the double top, right? We would negate the double top if it breaks above and closes above this high. When it no longer becomes a right shoulder is when it breaks above the head. I mean, if it keeps going and going and going for hours and hours and it keeps going sideways, then, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all, it's like, where do you, that's a good question, but it's like, there's no definitive answer. And realistically, if it just keeps hitting this point and if it keeps coming up and testing that head level and it continues to fall from there, just that in itself would be a pretty bearish indication, would it not? So um, as long as it stays below this 111.80 level, then it still has failed to create any kind of bullish move. <laughs> Trying to prove me wrong. I want you to prove me wrong. I hope it goes up there. I don't think I finished all this. So indicators, we didn't get to that, but that's okay. Prepping for a downturn. How do you adjust, right? And here's just, these are just some questions for thought. That's mainly all they're for is, you know, do you shift sectors, you know, Gold has been moving higher finally. It's kind of weird that it hasn't been with inflation like it is. Gold's been getting beat up, which is really odd. It's hard to figure out because usually when inflation is going, then gold is gold. Gold is going up when inflation is going up, typically, right? It's a hedge. Um, you change your time frame. I mean, if things are moving, the, the market's been really volatile the last couple of weeks. So if you have tight stops, you're going to get stopped out more often than normal, right? So sometimes you may want to adjust your time frame. We're, when we're in this wishy-washy spot, it's hard to tell what's, you know, when we haven't really changed direction yet. We're kind of in this, you know, back and forth spot. So sometimes it's better to be in a trade a shorter time frame, get in and out quicker. Um, you change instruments. I mean, somebody brought up futures the other night. Somebody brought up futures. Um, you change sectors. I mean, that's one thing. Inverse ETFs. If you're a bull and you only like to trade up, or if you don't like shorting stuff, if you're unable to short stocks, you can look at the ETFs that do the inverse, right? The SQQQ, that's the short cues. So if the market falls, then the short cues go up, right? It's an ETF that shorts the market. Uh, obviously options. I mean, I'm assuming that most of you, if not all of you are trading options. So you can go put, you know, shift the bear strategies. So, but it's about time to call it a day. I'm a few minutes over now. So <laughs> I'm still laughing at that, trying to prove me wrong comment. But uh Anyway, yeah, that was a, that was a good question, Patrick. And I, I almost said something about that too. I'm glad you brought that up. And I'll just as, as the last point, um, I think Bitcoin's kind of thrown this weird little wrench in things. Of people are using Bitcoin. People are putting money into Bitcoin. I don't know if that's affecting gold. They're not going to gold as a hedge, and they're using Bitcoin. Or what the deal is, but I mean that whole thing is just kind of nuts. I remember looking at it. In fact, I just talked to a gentleman last night that he bought one coin like seven or eight years ago for two hundred bucks, <laughs> and he has he has one full Bitcoin. And he's like, I'm a happy camper. I mean, you put two hundred bucks into it, now it's worth fifty or sixty grand. Um, yeah, some do say Bitcoin is replacing gold, which <sighs> I, I, 
I don't think physical stuff is ever going to go away. And that's, that's one reason I'm skeptical. I, mean, I looked at Bitcoin in 2012. It was 150 or 350 a coin or something like that. I remember thinking, you know, maybe I'll throw 500 or 1,000 bucks at it. I'm like, it just seems like a waste. It doesn't make sense to me. It was just weird. Of course, now looking back, you're like, ah, I just saw an article the other day where what's the, the Shibu Inu or whatever, that, that Bitcoin, if you would have bought $1,000 worth in January of this year, it'd be worth like 2.3 or 2.8 million right now. You would have gotten 12 and a half trillion coins, 12 and a half billion coins. And they went from like eight, one quadrillionth of a penny to two, one millionth of a penny. It's just, it's kind of craziness to me, but um, <clears throat> yeah. And that's what I think too, Will, is that, um, yeah, I just don't know until, and I think the big risk with the Bitcoin stuff and that's another reason that I think we could be in for a massive crash in the overall market is the big, if the Bitcoin crashes, a lot of people have money tied up in that too. And if they lose it there, then they can't, they have no money to put in the market, right? They're gone. Um, and governments are cracking down on Bitcoin. Some of them are embracing it, some are not. So until there's really some kind of, of stable government that backs Bitcoin and considers it to be legitimate, then I'm a little skeptical of it. So... Thank you, Patrick. Amen. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wish I wish I'd have gotten into it and then cashed out by now. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's just it's really hard to tell what's going to happen with it. So, and, and I don't. Uh, I'm just a little iffy about it. So maybe I mean, who knows what will play out. So anyway, now that we're about seven or eight minutes over, so. Appreciate y'all coming out, having some fun, hanging out. And uh, yeah, you have a great weekend as well. God bless you all. So uh, y'all take care. Bye-bye for now.